Alrighty, guys. Wrapping up day two. We're one of the few people left. You can't see. It's all dark. <laughs> Val's room just closed up. NBL closed up. Last men standing, but decided because Doug's got to catch a flight pretty early tomorrow. Um, although we still have to go to the Tad room and a few in the um, home theater for. Um, um, now I'm drawing a blank. SVS? No, we got to do another one. Primair. No, Primair. That's supposed oh. to be really cool. House of Stereo, that floor I still got to cover. But wanted to get your favorites uh, before you leave. Well, clearly the Acora room is always impressive. Um, what they just played in the volume they just played was very impressive. Total control of the lower end. Um, I actually got a sneak peek at the TAD speakers. Uh, very, very impressed uh, with that. Borson, uh, always. Um, I liked that there was a trend, or at least I saw several rooms that had sort of all-in-one uh, speakers uh, where you know, can save some money, entry-level audio files, where you, all you really need is a source. Um, so that's good to see because everything seems to be going up and up and up in price, and that just sort of makes it a little bit more accessible uh, to many people. Um, the uh, I don't know several speakers I really really like the uh, Gauder, Gauder um, acoustic yeah. I was very impressed with that um, Diptyque uh, Dip the electrostat yeah. uh, that was really impressive uh, the MBLs were great a lot of real real uh, tapes that's sort of a trend you're starting to see more and more real real which There's is great because analog audio device right? yeah analog yeah the, the analog tape deck. that was my first video from the show. yeah that was great um, so yeah all, all of the um, all of those tape decks sounded great. So I like, I like the trend of that because hopefully that means it'll become more accessible because I have a tape deck, but not a ton of tapes. You know, it's just hard to sort of find still. So hopefully as more and more people get into that aspect of it, they'll be more accessible. It's so nice to see something new coming on the market. Yes. Not refurbished old. Right. Like, like I have. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Yeah, that's exactly. the most analog tape yeah. people yeah. have. Yeah, right? but I love my Studer. I mean, I love my Studer yeah. tape deck. So the it's Metaxas great. The stuff was just, I mean, works of art. Yeah, the Metaxas was fun. More, that was a fun room. Form over function, in my opinion. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, got to check out the pants for tonight. They were can popular. You, can you stick a shoe up in there? <laughs> Actually, so tonight, <laughs> let's uh, uh, break down tonight because this is a memorable night. We heard uh, Violent Films for the first time because the Gershman Room really impressed us tonight. We well, were playing 80s. Yeah. I didn't mention them, but that, the, the Black Swan. The Black Swan, really which really tonight. impressed me if you watch my Toronto audio show coverage. And they had advantage of a much bigger room suitable for those speakers and the Eon Arts amplification. But you get a taste of it here, and really it's the technology that you're sniffing the potential of that speaker but we got to uh, really put it through the paces we played Cardi B Money first time at a show uh, Violent Films uh, we did a little Billy bit Idol. of Billy Idol we did a little bit of Name That Tune you won one uh, so yeah that was a lot of fun tonight it was a dance party and then let me tell you MBL always knocks it out the park but I gotta say I did an encore of that Learning to Fly by Tom Petty oh you want a picture yeah, go ahead you can take a picture <laughs> <laughs> okay well, all right nice just a quick picture <laughs> taking um but the um i think she was talking to me but that's all, that's all right <laughs> that would Why be stand up dave, dave that would be a first if a girl was talking to you <laughs> <laughs> anyway we had a great time even before tonight a well, shout out to mbl the analog tapes, and I, I thought that room sounded, it's, I don't know how Jeremy does it, but every time it even sounds better than the last time. Yeah. And uh, so major props to him. Like I said, I haven't gone to the um, Tad room, and the Clarisus room I haven't spent a whole lot of time in. Uh, but today was a few things. Talk about tonight in a second, but fourth floor here really inspired me from the standpoint of I'm used to seeing all this gear um, so from my perspective when you see a lot of they're not do-it-yourselfers they're they're making a product especially sound field uh, horn loaded line array uh, that's pretty impressive uh, and what you get for the money with that speaker amplification included that's the kind of stuff that you don't see very often. And to be able to see that at a Tampa show, a smaller show, not one of these big shows, very impressive. And then right across the hall, the Lee Song driver with a super tweeter on top of it and the uh, using piping from like Home Depot and hanging the drivers. Enjoyable as hell in there. And like this is the kind of passion you want to see. A lot of these big companies would never have the the 
tolerance for R&D over this time to do these kind of projects or projections. Uh, when you see passionate people doing these kind of things, innovating, that's what I really like to see. And, and that stuff like the sub drums. Remember that? The that sub drums. I mean, I mean, twenty one hundred bucks. So it's certainly fun. not. Um, well, they were so the much fun. But the, I mean, the accessories were killer. Yeah, they yep. were great. I mean, so. It's so been it was a fun a, show from that perspective. I mean, it made, you know, even rooms that weren't maybe super, super high, you know, as far as the audio so side of it are just a lot of fun or very affordable and the people are very nice. So it's, it's always a good It's time. playing great songs, too. It's a great show yeah. to come to. Mm -hmm. I guess we have to ask Dave, since he's in the picture, you, you know, <laughs> what did you think, Dave? Again, it, it's, it's almost a repeat of last year for me. You know, you've got the top contenders and they're, they're, there's a reason why they are. You know, it's consistency. You know, I mean, year after year, MBL, well, my first impression is always just so-so. But then it builds and it builds, and you do the late-night listing. And that's when things come alive, because that's when the gloves come off. You know, it was, you know, and I, I told this to Jeremy, and you can, the number one thing you can tell if everybody likes the room, not just you, is does anybody leave? We sat through an entire analog tape of playing 90 plus dB volume, not a person left, no. okay? Uh, so that's a testament to the good music, but when you can tolerate a system at 90 plus dB for an entire analog tape, nobody's moving, it's very rare. And um, some of those, I, I'm a big fan of that, Learning to Fly by Tom Petty. That's probably one of my favorite live recordings period. Uh, but yeah, that was a testament to the room from just oh. not just our impression, but everybody else sure. loving that. And as great as you know that, that room MBL was, after that we went over to the Accora room. And there's something about the, those speakers in that room, almost all Accoras, you can play them at the same volume and higher, and yet you don't hear, there was a bit of compression in the MBL room, because it was a, a bit too much, you know. But uh, because of course, just the space opened up. For me, it was the spatial aspects. I mean, the depth was just 20 foot, literally, between where I was to, you know, behind the speakers and then all the way around. It was almost as if they had the Bach engaged in that room when you were sitting in the right place. And that's how it should be. I mean, a good system set up, you should have, get a lot of that spatial cueing. And very few systems do that here. Well, you have longer reverb you know? times in there because it's basically almost a room that you would use for receptions. So what was really impressive to me, yes, you get a massive soundstage and, and all these things that Dave just mentioned. But to be able to produce the bass that I'm going to release in a video, it might be before this or after this gets released, um, to get it at those and SPLs, 100 dB SPLs we were playing, um, that was pretty such incredible. control such solidity that's very tough in a room like that so that's a testament to that's the level of dynamics you get with yeah. like mbl extremes the major horn systems super impressive so at lower volumes accords have always done well but we showed tonight it can compete with the big boys in dynamics uh, what else did you like well i have to give a shout out to lars and the big boris in room too you know i i arrived at the show early early thursday and uh, early afternoon, and Lars had his room open, going, you know, without, and it was just kind of me and him, and he let me sit for two hours just listening to wow. everything on my own, and those... He can write that off incredible. in his taxes for charity, That's right, right? Hey, I like the Dutch and Dutch show. Uh, oh, yeah. Too. I mean, the, Absolutely. The, the base performance of that for the price point that it is, I like the Steinheim with the plasma tweeter. Um, and a, and a tie, uh, yeah. It's a launch with the plasma. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you yeah. take yeah, the, the price of quote. The in the, uh, the real, real room. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Our tie. Our tie, yeah. That okay. yeah. was yeah. a really yeah. pleasant speaker. I really enjoyed that. So there's all these different rooms. It's hard to kind of remember all the ones that I like, but those are ones that kind of stood out to me. Margulis. Yes. All the the, the stand-mounted Margulis, stuff, I thought. He's was always one of the best values, yeah. but even forget about the price points. That, that's it, because often it's almost denigrating someone say, well, it's for price, this is a good product. No, just regardless of price, period, yeah. it stands on its own. Yeah. The, the problem in this sense. hobby is there is uh, a perception that a price equals a higher level of performance. And it's unfortunate that that's been conditioned into some people's minds. And when you see something at a lesser price, you knee-jerk think it's not to the level. But when with Margulis, you, if you don't tell them the price, you could think it's just as high a price as anybody else. It's, and yeah. that includes aesthetic too, and not just sound quality. So yeah. yeah. And what was that props. room we were going to 
we were going to completely ignore, I thought it was a joke, the glass. Oh, perfect date. Perfect yes. date. Because, you know, I just thought it was a joke. You know, they're hanging there. You know, clear is made out of glass, you know, like a plant. Well, that was the most transparent room. And <laughs> it was the most transparent room. But and but decided, well, let's, let's go in. I mean, how, you know, what could possibly go wrong, you know? Right. Right. And, and here it was. It was like I felt bad because, wow. Yeah, it was they had that single subwoofer glass. Pretty subwoofer. dynamic room for. And, uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect stunning. much out of that, but that was that was pretty. It impressive. was stunning. Yeah, yeah, and this was also the first time in Tampa that the box showed up in the Dutch and Dutch, and these both of these guys have the Bach and we did a demo without Edgar. Uh, we gave away the power cord tonight. Was he was here in spirit. Yes, forty-five minute. <laughs> Uh, demo that Dave recorded of me in there. So I think I'm going to release that video that shows the entire demo because not only did it have cool music tracks, it also answered a lot of questions that people ask me about the Bach. And so this will extrapolate it to a wider audience if you didn't get a chance to come. Uh, I think we still will have some demos tomorrow, private demos, but I'm leaving late afternoon. You're leaving in the morning. And when are you staying an extra day? Yeah, I've got a whole day. So okay. I was planning on doing things in the morning. Okay, and so Dave, Doug, if you have any questions with uh, the Bach, feel free to grab them. Some people already have, haven't they? Yeah, NBL owners have certainly asked me some questions, but there's a lot of buzz about it. It's a great product, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. All right, guys, anything else before we sign off? It's getting late. But yet the NBL room's still going. <laughs> no, that's not the NBL. That's the overhead speakers. No, no, I think it's still going, though. Okay, well, let's go check it out. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. yeah. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good night. <laughs>